Hello everybody, welcome to this interview. Um, I'm here with Chris Rod Rogers. Um, he uses Inkscape to make uh, graphics and videos and real physical things. Um, we're here at Fosdem and I decided to ask Chris if he'd sit down and talk about some of the things that he uses Inkscape for and some of the challenges that he has. Um, he's also a FOSS advocate who works on free software and with free software projects and organizations. So um, welcome to this uh, interview. Thanks, glad to be here. Excellent. So how, how did you find, find out about Inkscape? Well, uh, I first found out a bit about Inkscape when I was um, looking for an alternative to Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> because yeah. um, at the time, uh, I think still a, a few of them now still exist, but uh, there are some limitations that are inherent in working with Illustrator. At the time it was uh, CS3 and um, I was working with really big convention booth wall um, uh, panels and uh, in Illustrator you had to work at like a quarter scale because there was a maximum oh, uh, amount that you could... Uh, so, yeah. so, so they had physical limitations? Yeah, physical uh, limitations but it also had a, a hard-coded um, minimum uh, DPI as well. Oh wow! And it was it was like seventeen or something, which doesn't sound like a lot, but mm -hmm. when you're doing a whole room graphics and you want to send samples to your boss, and your boss has an iPhone or something, and it, you know there's like a maximum file size it can yeah. handle, and it's still like millions and millions of pixels, right? Wow. Um, so I was using Inkscape uh, to work at full scale, and um, Inkscape has always been able to export at whatever DPI you wanted of to, course. or um, pixel dimensions, uh, and um, I. It's also much easier to do certain things uh, in the software than Illustrator is. It has hotkeys on all of the Boolean operations, which in an Illustrator, even to this day, still doesn't have those hotkeys that make that, it that's like an just, extension. Of that's it. just mysterious. Like, like, <laughs> the, the UX, uh, it surprises me. I mean, I guess um, if they're the monopoly, they don't really have to try, but still. I mean, Illustrator has never been their, their primary, the pr primary selling product. software. Yeah. It, it's very niche to people who are using logos and yeah. vector illustration, like Inkscape. But, so uh, so yeah. did you just sort of type in to Google, like vector image editor or something? I was literally trying all sorts of other things, yeah, like I usually do. I usually try <laughs> try new things and see what's out there um, if not to use then to you know steal UX ideas for <laughs> nice. my, my own purposes. So apart from uh, convention boots uh, what else have you used in Inkscape for? Um, yeah so I've used it for um, product design. Uh, one of the nice things about uh, being able to work at scale is a um, is that uh, you can plan things out uh, like if you're making uh, a phone case or something yep. uh, you can import the uh, uh, the dimensions of the phone that you're making the case for, which is what I used to do, or I used to do um, mobile phone cases and other portable device cases. Cool. Um, so I could plan all that out. I'm in Inkscape in, in uh, real dimensions. I could even print out, you know, a little uh, 3D constructed things uh, yep. that we could then send to our manufacturers and, and try bits. Um, and then when uh, Blender started uh, picking up uh, uh, in the industry, um, I switched to 3D modeling things uh, and using um, Inkscape as a basis for those 3D models. So yeah, but, um, yeah, the compatibility really helps like, with SVG. Yeah, yeah. and actually, um, I still want to write some plugins uh, that will uh, import not only the vectors but also the gradients because currently the gradients are there's no translation, but it would be easy enough to. Um, write a Python script uh, to take the gradient information and turn it into um, right, yeah. Yeah, height, height information or something? No, no, it, it would be like a color ramp. Okay. Um, in, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Blender's uh, textures are all like a node based, so you'd connect mm. um, a color ramp to a high gradient texture and then you would have the mapping of the gradient texture uh, keyed to the same values as uh, they would be in Inkscape and in, okay. in local space. So we've we've mentioned um, the uh, keyboard shot shortcuts, mm -hmm. and, and we've mentioned the compatibility with other free software. Yeah, yeah. Are there other any other advantages that you really think Inkscape shines at? I mean, I use Inkscape for ev like absolutely everything. <laughs> um, I use it for uh, illustration work. So breakfast. Yeah, breakfast. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, planning out my eggs. I uh, will my eggs fit on this plate. Um, Absolutely. You know, you have to know before you start. Yeah. Right? Uh, 
No, well, I mean, so uh, I do lots of um, illustration work, some a little uh, cartoony uh, drawings with the uh, yeah. uh, the tablet functionality and the uh, uh, the pen tool. You know. The, yeah. Because I'm 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 like I'm like you. Like I use Inkscape for almost everything. Like yeah. I, I planned out wiring diagrams for my house. Yeah, yeah. And like new construction things of like I'm doing some woodwork and I just use it to like map out what I'm doing. I don't print it or use uh, the instructions. It's just good as a doodling tool where you get like geometric yeah. objects out of it. Um, if you're organizing your room and you want to know how much room you have left after yeah. some bed you found at the at the uh, the yeah. local shop is, you can. Uh, bring up Inkscape with a a one to one floor plan of your room and see right away and see, see if it would fit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard people using Inkscape as a ruler, which is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> use it as a ruler. Um, so you you used Inkscape like while you were at work. Mm -hmm. Did you experience resistance from managers and people, colleagues and things? No, but um, like I would say that I I've always been the kind of guy who they're just like. They look at the output, <laughs> and they don't really care how you do it. Right. Most places I've worked were like that, where they're like, uh, I mean, good. and honestly, the fact that I wasn't um, uh, bugging my boss to upgrade to um, a subscription software right. after they already bought CS3, you know. So the um, money helps. Like, yeah, yeah, well, he, he was appreciative of that in the first place. Yeah. Uh, and also the fact that I can just do things much faster with Inkscape and right. the speed really matters. So when uh, that's what got me into Inkscape in the first place was I could just do things so much faster. Yeah, in Inkscape. And, so, uh, so genuinely, you feel like um, people within the design industry could use Inkscape. Oh yes, within their workflows. Is Absolutely. Like, yeah. um, and there are um, big advantages, uh, not just with the speed, but also with uh, the clone system, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Illustrator has things called symbols, um, which are kind of similar. Like uh, you yeah. can make um, or an or a, an object or a group of objects a symbol and then or it appears in this little drop down menu that you can add mm. which is fine if you're only working with a couple of them yeah. but if you're working for or, or if you're if you're working with uh, nested uh, clones yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. clones it, it doesn't do that it falls apart really quickly and it's just an awful mess mm. um, so uh, yeah inkscape is I <laughs> I showed inkscape to um, to this uh, um, uh, what is it? Um, I'm an agency, a design agency. agency. Design agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, they're like, oh, you use um, or open source open up, yeah. software because it's on my my uh, CV alongside all the proprietary stuff. And they're, uh, they're like, oh, uh, why do you use this stuff? And I'm like, let me show you. Let me show you some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I showed them my template for doing um, all of the social media sizes of. Uh, well, like uh, uh, Facebook has like uh, three different sizes. Um, so it's a yeah. social media tent. Yeah, I'm Instagram also has a couple of them, but I just make one, uh, square one, and then um, I've already uh, uh, arranged uh, clones of those mm -hmm. objects uh, within in uh, different places in all of those yeah. uh, different and, things. And people who watch these videos will probably have seen the um, uh, uh, booklet template that I made. Mm. And that is basically inspired by your work on the clones because from seeing your work about how you can basically use groups as a sort of like pseudo um, duplicated page mm -hmm. that, that like keeps the cha changes so like as you keep editing stuff it appears in the right places yeah. and the right sizes. Um, that inspired me to sort of like make the, the zine template um, and people can hopefully we'll, we'll be able to access that in the next ver version of Inkscape. Cool. Um, that's a, that's a single page that you print out, and then you just fold it together into a booklet. Yeah, you're yeah. showing me, yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you've you actually spent time contributing to Inkscape. Um, you were on the project leadership co co committee for a time. Mm -hmm. um, what, how do you feel about people sort of contributing and spending time on the tools and like uh, on the projects that sit behind the, the free software? Um, yeah, so... Uh, how do I feel about um, other people doing it? Or? Uh, I mean, is it is it easy? Uh, is it enjoyable? Um, yes. Should people do it? Is it? I mean, it's important? definitely challenging. I, I would yeah. say, um, but it also depends on what you're contributing to. Mm. Um, if you already have something that you can contribute, like for me, it was easier to contribute because 
I'm a career designer. Yeah. I do uh, video stuff already. Like I didn't start doing it for Inkscape, for right. example. Um, so if you already have some skills uh, that you can offer to the project, um, then it's an easier. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of um, onboard yourself <laughs> as uh, yeah, so how, doing something. How did you get in? Did you did you just join? Uh, you got me involved, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the, wow. uh, uh, the Lee Tag Fest? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I remember the uh, Tag Fest. So that's where I met you, okay. and or at least in person. I think we had had we may have chatted before, chatted yeah. over the internet a couple of times, but um, that's when I got serious about uh, being involved in Inkscape because yeah. I saw how much fun it was. Uh, it, can, and, it can be. Like, like, there's a lot of a lot of fun to be had. Um, I mean, the, the one thing I would say in terms of contributions is just when you're new, you don't really know what you're allowed to do. Yeah. And so being able to figure out like what the structure of the community is, who has the keys, and how easily those keys can be given out to to new contributors. Absolutely. That that's pretty much like the key of of uh, community management as a community manager on, on my side. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that Inkscape has struggled in, in much the same way as many open source projects do with just making sure that con contributors, non-programming contributors, like the work that you did, yeah. um, that they have an easy way to join the project. Um, I know you did some of our release videos. Yeah. Which yeah. look pretty pretty awesome, I've got to say. Like, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, there are, there are people out there who genuinely who, who would have seen those release videos and who would have thought that Inkscape was a commercial product. Yeah, I, w I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since I do those sorts of, of uh, videos. Um, but yeah, it, or Inkscape, uh, uh, the first two or three, I can't remember, um, I did uh, uh, or on a volunteer basis. Yeah. And then uh, the project actually paid me for the, uh, the one. For the last one. Yeah, yeah, the last one I did. Yep. Um, yeah, we're so, trying to get better at paying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know. I, uh, it was fun to do the other ones, but I kind of lost time for it. And it's like a, a good solid month's worth of work. Yeah, like yeah, time all your spare time for a month. I mean, timing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, when you're a, when you're a free agent or, or your contractor, like the the your time is your money. Yeah. And so there's 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 a because it is fun. There is a certain amount of um, pull towards getting you to work on things for free. But you're basically beggaring yourself, so you need to create some allowances. You know, for me, I, I schedule a certain amount of time that I volunteer, yeah. And then there's a certain amount of time that people pay me to work on Inkscape for, which I'm very great, grateful for. Um, and I think it's it's important. I think it's important for the Inkscape project itself to take seriously uh, paying people for their time, uh, simply because it, it it makes it easier to get the kinds of results that we want. Like videos or programming or yeah, what have you. anything that takes a substantial amount of both uh, um, expertise and time. Expertise and time, yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, it's, it's one thing if you say, well, like if if a result happens, then that's good, but it doesn't have to. Yeah, yeah. But if the project has made a decision that this has to happen, has to happen yeah. then that's a very good indication. I wouldn't call it a red flag, more of a green flag. It's a green flag that you should probably pay them. Yeah, and it also like helps things like um, accountability as well. It definitely does, yeah, because you can you can actually demand that the work be done, yeah. right? Because you, you, you're paying them. Um, okay, uh, do you have any questions for me? Um, well, I, no, because I watch your podcast all the time <laughs> on your Patreon, so I know how you like it. Thank <laughs> you. And we talked on the train all the oh, way here. We so. did talk on the train <laughs> all, all the way. Uh, do you have any advice for the, the people at home about using Inkscape in the industry? Um, yeah, so I mean, it really depends on if you're a freelancer or if you're working in an agency and, and what your company expects. Because you know, those or who, yeah. who, uh, whoever's paying you might have expectations on what software you use. If they require those things, then you don't have much of a choice. But the thing about um, Inkscape and other uh, open source software is you can always use them alongside it uh, as long as uh, your company is okay with you installing you know uh, yeah I, a piece of I a, actually, a free software yeah I actually recommend that to a lot of the designers who they say well I already have Illustrator I already have Affinity Designer and I say yeah. to them that it's there's no cost to you installing Inkscape no separately and anyway there is benefit to um, when you stop working for those companies or, or you like start out on, on your own you might not 
um, either want to continue paying or Adobe their blood money every single <laughs> wow. yeah. um, and you might also uh, want to be able to offer for example um, template files mm -hmm. to your client as a service um, and with Inkscape you can include the software to edit it for free which you yeah. can't do with in Inkscape and that has high client value um, clients will choose you over somebody else if they have control over their own digital assets like that. Yeah, uh, which is one of of the big selling points for me for for um, using Inkscape. for Inkscape uh, as well because I don't have to worry about if you know uh, uh, the software goes to a subscription model and now I, I don't have any way to open and use my files anymore yeah. because uh, yeah yeah you feel like your your uh, Inkscape files are safer than. Illustrated files. Well. Not only that, I feel like they're mine. Oh, right. That you actually own way, them. Yeah. <laughs> in a way that you don't own your own work when you use proprietary stuff uh, yeah. that you can't open with anything else, right? Your assets uh, belong to Adobe. Like, I mean, um, um, maybe not right, in a usable sense, but in the fact that they're preventing you from using it. Yeah, the right? access control. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Access control is rubbish. And I, I don't know any. Uh, I'm artist, a designer who actually likes that. Um, oh no, it's it's it's, it's definitely <laughs> one of those things where you're 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 judging like what kinds of hits you can take and yeah. risks you can take. Um, and you don't really own your software anymore, um, except if you use open source software. Open source, yeah. I mean, th this is this is the hard thing, right? Like, we want people to be able to own their own soft software because we think it's important to industry like industry should have full control over the tools that it uses you don't expect a hammer to like suddenly require you to to subscribe to a monthly fee in, in order to hit the nail and you know a, a lot of other industries don't understand just how uh, pervasive and perverse this, this the software industry has gotten over yeah. time as it as it's it's trying to find ways of earning money but then it moves from just earning money to like extorting money. Yeah. And that's when it becomes problematic. And and the thing is, is like open source, what it really boils down to, at least from my perspective, is it's a it's a compact to guarantee that like we cannot force you. And that's how you can trust us. Yeah, yeah. Well also um, it makes contributing to it that much more gratifying too because yeah. you know that not only are you helping yourself you're also helping everybody else in the world, millions of users. Millions of users, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, have have that stuff that you want, right? Yeah. And then, I don't know, sharing is caring, I suppose you could say. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you very much for your time and this wonderful interview. And um, hopefully we'll see you online. Yep, definitely. And thanks for watching. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>